You could call it the metaverse, and in my book I call it the metaverse instead of God because it's a nice neutral, sciencey, mathy word. <laughs> and um, if you were a string theorist, you would call it the uh, multiverse. And that is a valid line of cosmology and physics and math that many atheists happily partake in. So we can call it any of these things. The point being, emptiness, no space, no thought, no notions whatsoever. Now, if there was a thought, now you got something messing up the, the no, no thought. So I think that our universe threw this bubble around us. And it came out looking like this. You know, if a porpoise burps underwater, it blows out these bubbles, right? You all know that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the shape of an explosion. The, the, this here's your mushroom cloud, right? It, it, it's by definition, it's only logical that if the universe began from a single point, then this has to be the shape of the universe. This is where explosions wind up. This is the shape of an explosion. It's not a sphere. We often think of explosions as a big sphere, but it's not a sphere. It's a donut. But donuts are related to spheres. Let me show you that donuts are related to spheres. I asked, I asked my friends to bring a balloon. You can make a donut by taking a sphere and pushing your fingers together. Ugh. See? You see the donut shape? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm recreating the toroidal effect with an ordinary balloon. Yes, you can also try this at home. <laughs> now that's an important, that's an important mathematical concept, the idea that if you push together, well, just think about this. If this is the shape of our universe, because this is the shape of the Big Bang riding outward, then, I guess, imagine this is our universe now. Well, if this is the unsullied metaverse out here, how far away is it to you? Where are you in here? This is a fractal formula. So you're nested all the way down to that quantum level. Boom, 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 boom. Right inside here. This could be, it doesn't have to be, but it works really well as a no uh, physical space type of model. You know how some people say, oh, this is, I probably shouldn't have gone there. Never mind. We'll X this one out, Carol. We won't take you there, Billy. You might have to explain that again. <laughs> but this model could either be our physical 3D space or the thought that this isn't really a physical 3D space we're in. We think we're in this physical 3D space, but we're really in this kind of nested toroidal space. And so when people meditate, you're re-nesting into the fractal formula. When you get all lost and off of balance, you have unnested your donuts out of phase with the fractal. Okay, all right. We'll get to that. We'll get to that one. All right. So let's just try it this way. Let's consider our bodies as, a, let's just look at our bodies. Forget about the whole universe. Let's just look at us. Think about you. Who are you? How many of you are there? When I say me, who am I? Is it just the singular Sid Rock here that, that we think of as me? Or do you really just think that you are you? Well, then how, when you have conversations, when you have fights with yourself, who's arguing with you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and when your stomach really wants that uh, whatever it is, and you're saying no, no, and then you get it anyway, the stomach gets it anyway, right? There's a lot of people, there's a lot of units of consciousness inside of you. I'm suggesting that the ground state of the universe is consciousness. So as the small waves, <clears throat> which in yoga it's called anu, A-N-U, when the small waves, small particles begin pouring out of the Big Bang, populating this 3D time and space, you know, you know our universe is growing still, right? The universe is expanding, and I have a different reason why it is. I, I think it actually is still expanding because I think that the metaverse is still bubbling little donuts into this universe out in the middle. So it's pushing, 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 just like the bubbles at the bottom of a waterfall. Have you ever watched bubbles at the bottom of a waterfall? Not something I'll do? Well, okay. Something I like to do is look at the bubbles. They, anyway, they're just like the little toroidal bubbles bubbling into our 3D time and space out of the, out of the center. But anyway, all right, so 
My body, certainly we know it consists of me. It's one of me. But there's 11 organ systems in me, and I would argue that at any given time, one of those organ systems is often in charge. <laughs> is it sex? Is it stomach? Is it who's, who's in charge now? Who's paying attention? <laughs> There are, that's your organ systems. The organs, are 78 organs. They all have a job to do. They are all holding on. You know, for example, your skin is an organ, right? You know, your skin's an organ. What is your skin? It's skin cells reaching out to hold hands with it, that information, that epigenetic information they're carrying forward. You know, now we've answered how it is that the molecules can continually turn over and the cells can turn over in three years and the information carries forward because Everything's a fractal of the universal unit of consciousness. Everything in this room, from the dust, through the cells, through me, knows everything that the universe knows. Because we're fractal iterations of the mother donut. Okay, sure. This, this itty bitty one here, this itty bitty one, we all know it's not this. Nobody has to argue with that, but yet it sure does know how to be this. The DNA's all in here. It just happens to be smaller. So I'm thinking that I am made up of all the subatomic particles, all the atoms, all the molecules. They're all units of consciousness reaching out to hold hands to level up to the next level. They're all working inside of my skin. They're all holding together. They're all doing their job. If anybody stops doing their job, what happens? We die. Everybody's important. From the molecules up through us. We're part of some bigger cell. You know, you're part of an even bigger cell. Uh-oh, don't get lost, but... <laughs> oh, here we are. That's us. What's, your, what's our level up? Families, societies, work groups. What are societies levels up? Global. For those of you who believe in Gaia, that would be the name of the global unit of consciousness. It just keeps leveling up. I just have this here to show you that it's all fractal. It's all fractal. It keeps going up and nesting up and nesting up. So I, I think of myself as Meat Mountain or uh, Whoville, I'm the governor of Whoville. The big S self that we talk about in uh, spiritual traditions and yoga and whatnot, that's the singular unit of consciousness that came into this meet when this person was conceived. So um, when I quickened in the womb, Sid got attached to this set of meat. But these guys had already been attached, right? Because, you know, Everybody's devoted to keeping me alive. And the lower down you go in the hierarchy, the more and more and more there are. There are way more molecules and atoms inside of your body, inside of your skin, than there are objects in heaven. And I'm not just being rhetorical. They use that, I, I keep running across that uh, analogy, that there are more cells that there are more molecules in the human body than there are stars in the known universe. That's how complex and dense you are. Now, if they're all units of consciousness, if they're all fractals of the universal unit of consciousness, everything knows how to do what it's doing. It's a kind of intelligent design theory. OK, I'll give you that. But there's only one design. This is it. <laughs> Who's going to fight over that? <laughs> Who's going to kill anybody over this? <laughs> all right. So I am all these trillions and countless, zillions and quazillions, uh, countless, all this is in my body, and it goes everywhere I go. All right? Yeah. So where I'm just one big guy. I'm like the Raja sitting on top of the elephant is how I think of, of me, the governor of Whoville. But these guys are all going everywhere I go. They experience everything I experience. Okay. So it gives a new meaning to love your neighbor as you love yourself. 
people go, oh, it's nice to love your neighbor. Oh, yeah, it's part of the golden rule, right? Reach out to others with love. But that's not so easy if you don't really love yourself. <laughs> that's where a lot of people have trouble. It's the loving themselves part. What does that mean? Usually it's, it feels like a selfish act to love yourself. What it means is to be kind to this countless universe of units of consciousness inside each one of you. So when you mistreat the organs and everybody else, you are being a bad governor of your Whoville. <laughs> They're doing their best to keep you alive. They're doing their best to let you live to be 200 or however long you want to be. And uh, what are you doing? You're drinking and you're taking drugs and you're eating too much sugar, whatever you're doing. You're not taking care of Whoville. But Whoville will tell you, Whoville will let you know. You just have to listen to Whoville. Are you buying this? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, good. So uh, I've given a lot of thought to Whoville. I've always known mud up, spirit down. That's a common concept in spiritual writing, right? I mean, God's up here, and the mud's down here. And when we ground, we're grounding from the feet, and we're reaching up to heaven. But this actually works better. Because what if we're all just a series of nested donuts, so to speak? And all your quadrillions of things, by the way. You know, we know we don't look like this triangle. I'm just saying, I'm not so sure we look like this either. I kind of think we look like this, only a quadrillion deep with all the little guys. Because we're all fractal, just like these are fractals, of the same mother plant. This in the Tao is called the mother of the 10,000 things. If you read the Tao, does anyone here read the Tao? Okay. So uh, we can also see it's a very nice, sexy, very sexy uh, metaphor for all kinds of things. You know, it, it, it's got the yoni and this is male and female. Do you know that in a perfect Taurus, the type I'm thinking of is the actual unit of consciousness shape. Because we began with a single point in space, right? So the emitter is uh, like black hole size, right? It's one point. It's still in the metaverse. And when we push the, when I push the uh, balloon together from end to end, let's imagine I was God sitting outside of our universe, and I push my fingers together that, to make that donut shape that's there. It didn't really work that way, but I'm saying, do you get what I'm saying? Yes. If I'm on the outside, I'm inside. Both outside and inside. So that fellow that wrote that book about uh, home, home, about uh, imminent and what are those two? What's that polarity that God is both, we are both uh, inside and outside, or? Uh, <laughs> Never mind, I'm just stop looking at that corner. We're a Klein God. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, if this is a primordial shape, and we are all shaped like this donut, including the, the mother of 10,000 things, or God the Father, and, and, and if any of you are Christians, I can explain to you how that would work, and, and it's not a heresy. Uh, <laughs> then when we center, how come they always talk about centering? How come when you want to be at peace, it's a centering? Because there it is. This is the shape. And when you center, you are literally reseating yourself into the uber pattern. And this is where peace resides. When people are unsettled, they're not channeling the, uh, here, I'll show you. OK, so here we have the donut again, right? You see the donut shape. All right, not that one. Hold on. There we are. Too many down. Here we go. I'm going to look just like the other one, do it. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Cosmology means the study of how things came to be. Or some such thing. The, the cosmos, right? Okay. So imagine that our Uber donut 
everything flows like this. Whether or not this is actual, actual, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure, but it's a heck of a model. It's a great model. And people are always just working with models. This is a 4D model. It works great. Okay, so here we have future potential pouring down from the top into the singularity at the middle. Right at the singularity, can anyone here who hasn't read the book guess what it's called right here? If this is potential and this is history coming out the bottom, do you know what's that? No. 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 It is! You got it! Yeah. See? It's here and now. So here's what happens. And, and think about it. It's just all so logical. When you think about your own future, all the places you could go and be and do and this and that, and then the closer it gets to the event or the day, your choices, your possibilities become increasingly constrained, right? Until here we are right now, you're sitting right there. You are doing nothing but sitting right here, right here and now. Your possibilities have collapsed to that place in time and space. You're all here now. You know you only have here and now, right? Okay, so here's what we have. Future collapses at the point of here and now, which is the very center. And you've just done one thing. You could have done anything, but no, you did that one thing. And so it's coming out as a single line. Time. This is the flow of time. Potential collapses. This is called the point of observation in physics. To here and the, at the here and now spot. And it becomes consequences. It becomes history. Some of that consequence rolls back around because, oh, I don't think we've mentioned, but of course this whole thing rolls, you know, if I pass this around the room, the whole thing rolls. And when any part of the torus rolls, it all rolls. So you've got toroidal flow this way, consequences rolls back around. You did that thing. You went to community college and you got your A degree, so one of the consequences is now you can get that job as a solar technician. Okay, so history, you got the degree, consequences rolls back around and becomes part of your future potential. Solar technician, I can get that job. And now it rolls in, and at the point of here and now, you can get hired. Okay, everything works that way. Everything works that way. I ate too much, consequences, the calories are coming back around. Sometimes they call this karma com coming around is karma. Karma, that's all, that's what karma is. It's just the consequences of action. It's collapsed potential. It's the ripples in the stream. You can't deny the rock was dropped. There are the ripples. So here I ate too much, here it's coming around as consequences, and it turned this into karma, and it informs my future potential. I'm gonna less or, boy, I really like those cream cakes. Whatever the thing I learned was, it's coming back around again. <laughs> so, so, it goes this way, constantly going this way, constantly going this way. Karma, potential, karma, potential. Another thing that happens, I told you about the Big Bang, right? So the Big Bang goes out here, and as, t as time and space and matter fill out the inside of this expanding Taurus. How does it expand? Where's the energy coming from? It can't come from the metaverse. That's undifferentiated consciousness. God's sitting there in the own state. God's not pumping atoms into the universe. So where's it coming from? This is a very interesting concept. Think about this. Imagine, okay, no matter how big this is, you can imagine this universal size, or you could just imagine this, but at the outside of this thing, there's a lot of room, right? And as it rolls over the lip, because once everything rolls, it all rolls, and it rolls into the middle, it starts falling into this funnel that's very much like a black hole as potential time collapses into here and now, right? From all of the future, it's collapsing. It has to roll all the way from the outside down through the well down to here and now, what happens to all that surface area? It gets collapsed to a singularity. That's a lot of pressure. You see what I'm saying? 
It's a lot of potentiality. If this is, as most ancient religions think, um, a, a thought of God or a dream of God, uh, it is not energy, it is not matter, whatever it is, consciousness. How does it turn into 3D matter, time, and space? By the pressure of this membrane inverting itself at the center and exploding into the middle, into the universe. See? You see? Ah, oh, that intentionality. Chit in Sanskrit, rolling around to here and now. It inverts itself. So what was outside pressure holding in becomes inside force exploding out because you came down and inverted. Do you see how that is? These are not easy thoughts. I've been thinking them for many years. It has taken some training, but I think you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. Yes, oh, and I'm calling the containing force on the outside of the membrane coherence or containment. I think at the very small scale, it's gravity. I think from the outside, if, these, if this is the shape of your quantum, and this all is the shape of quantum particles quantum probability clouds. So this is the probability shape of subatomic particles. And then the, you know this is the, that cloud shape of uh, the atomic level and molecular level things, right? Which if you don't, my book, $30 at the end of the show. <laughs> it, it, it has all these illustrations and it explains all of this in a much more coherent way than I am doing right now. Believe me, but anyway. so. The containment of the skin at the very small level is, is gravity. It's what pulls things together. What well, we call it love. What does it feel like when you love someone or when you hold someone? It's gravity. You're being pulled together. That's the bond. At the human level, it feels like love.